Hey everybody, um, going live right now to talk about Pyware stuff. I'm going to wait a few minutes and or a few seconds and see if uh, anybody shows up and has any questions. Today's main focus is uh, question and answer for Pyware, if anybody has any of those. And if not, I'm going to go through my uh, CBDNA, um, CBDNA uh, presentation that I went over um, back in the... Uh, Oh, summer of last year, talking about uh, how I do pictures and animations um, and resizing things. Uh, it's kind of a cool trick. So, um, if anybody that's joining has questions, feel free to type those in, and I'll I'll get to those as um, as they come up. Um, So I'll just I'll just go ahead and get started here with this pictures and animations thing. So uh, at Purdue University, I uh, I write a lot of the drill there. I'm one of two drill writers. Uh, we have another fantastic drill writer, Al Timby, who does uh, a lot of really good work for us. Um, but between the two of us, we basically cover the whole shebang over the last three years. Um, a lot of the shows that we do have pictures and animations to them, including our pregame show. Um, this is typically what our fans really enjoy. They relate to those kind of things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna showcase a few of those things. Um, you know, we do eight shows a year if there's seven football games. Uh, next year, I think there's six home games, so we'll do seven shows. That's uh, six shows plus a pregame. Um, we rehearse Monday through Friday gives us a little bit more time compared to some universities for how much time we have to uh, learn a show. So we're able to do a little bit more complex things. Uh, it just kind of depends on uh, uh, a time. Sometimes we only have one week to learn a show. Sometimes we have two weeks to learn a show. Sometimes we even have three weeks to learn a show. Uh, so that, that all kind of goes into um, how we design. Uh, I'm going to show you some pictures, uh, how to find pictures, create pictures in Pyware, and animate pictures. Um, and then some Pyware tips and tricks to help speed up the process. This is what I use to design. Um, I just got the latest MacBook Pro back in December. I love it. Um, it's super powerful. I've got 32 gig of RAM, uh, 8 gig video card um, in the i9. So it's plenty fast enough to run things. Not everybody needs this for Pyware. Um, but most people do, especially if you're designing for groups that are over 150 to 200 people. Um, you're going to need something with a little bit of horsepower. Here's a show that we did. Um, I don't know if it's going to show the audio or not, but I'll try. Um, I just like the audience reaction from this show. Let's see if it... I just love the reaction that we get from the crowd when we do these kind of things. Um, and in the college environment, uh, this is the stuff that stands out. So you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, let me check, see if there's any questions that have popped up um, via Facebook Live there. Nope, it wouldn't be there, it'd be under Chrome.
this shows it yeah we don't have uh, any questions quite yet that's okay so uh, when we're talking about finding pictures and stuff where to start um, I am NOT a freehand artist um, I can trace with the best of them but what I can't do is just pick out an image out of thin air and try to manipulate it so generally um, unless it's a stick figure, I'm going online to try and find something um, that works real well. And uh, my mouse cursor has vanished. Huh. And that is interesting. Um, so I went online and I found these. Uh, the one on the right, the stick figures with the lightsaber, is kind of what I used as... Um, my starting off point for the lightsaber battle that you saw from back in 2017. The guy on the left is my surfer guy um, and I used that for a show called The Beach um, that we did in 2018 where we had a guy wipe, off, wipe out off of a surfboard. So um, where to start? Let's, uh, let's open Pyware up. This is going to be hard without a uh, mouse cursor. Okay, it shows on that part of the screen. If anybody is a computer genius and knows how to get my mouse cursor back, that would be awesome. Oh, there it is. Somebody said a nice prayer to get that uh, mouse cursor back. Okay, so um, we've got the blank canvas here uh, started. And if I want to do it, I'm, I'm in Pyware Professional. So I'm going to use the floor cover tool. Just make a, a general floor cover area. And then I'm going to choose an image. And on my desktop, I have the surfer guy already there um, and voila he's there I'm gonna make an opacity of say 75 percent so I can still see the grid lines in the background from here I'm going to uh, just trace so I know this is a circle so I'm going to kind of do that and manipulate that circle just a little bit. You might want to be at least at an eighth step interval to kind of get things detailed. Um, I'm going to eliminate a couple of performers here. And then I'm just going to uh, use the pencil tool and do some clicks and just trace along the shapes. When there's a curve, you want to have a few more clicks. When there's a straight line, you can move a little bit faster through it. You see each red box that I do is a click. I'm going to kind of move around these little guys like this. See, it's not revolutionary, <laughs> the, the steps that I'm taking here. It's not like I, I'm doing anything that is um, co totally complex. I'm just kind of, I'm just tracing. Um, like those tracing coloring books that we used to do as kids. Okay, so I've traced the man. Hit accept. And uh, I'm going to take away the, uh, the prop image. And see, look, it looks like a little man. There we go. Now, um, in the image here, there's also a surfboard that we can animate or we can uh, put as part of our picture. I'm not going to worry about that right now. But right now, it looks like he's falling down or sliding down a hill or down um, um, some sort of wave. Um, I want him to be going up. So I'm just going to take it and rotate him. So 
So you can use any picture you want um, and then manipulate the picture to uh, make it do what you want it to do, um, how you want it to look. Let me check for any uh, comments or questions here. Um, it's really uh, not, a, not a big deal. You just want to do it. Now, here are some tricks that um, I want to go over. If you look here, this is the stadium perspective of how things look. And for a regular stadium setup, about where we're at, that somewhat is visible as a, as a person. Um, we don't know that it's a surfer because there's no surfboard. We don't know what he's doing, but uh, it kind of looks like a person. But if you look over here around the arms, the arms look pretty close together. Um, and it's because of the perspective. What, what I would recommend doing is taking your person using the stretch tool and making it longer, making it taller. I'm going to show you the difference here. Now you can start your start to see things. Now if you look just from a top down perspective, it looks a little better. Now what I might do also is just highlight the top a little bit and stretch that out. Now he's starting to look a little weird, especially from the top view. But if you look at it this from this way, he's starting to look a little bit more normal. Okay. So what I want to um, really encourage you to do, if you're doing stick figures, if you're doing people, um, or any type of picture, um, is that you elongate the further up field that you get. Okay. Now, this guy is 98 people. For a lot of marching bands, um, no matter um, if you're a college marching band or whatnot, um, you should be able to do 98 people. There's, I know there's some of you guys out there that are doing small school, um, university, small university bands don't have quite 98 people on the field. Um, but you know, you can do that with 98 people if you have 98 wins. Um, but what if you don't have 98 wins? What if, what if you have 60 wins or something like that? Let's do, let's save this. And uh, we're just going to save this to the desktop. And I'm going to call it um, Running Man. <laughs> what, if, what if you want to make it smaller? I always recommend charting out big and then working small instead of charting out small and then working big. Um, it's a whole lot easier to take people out than it is to add people. So uh, let's say we want to take, uh, let's see, here, 75 wins. So that'd be uh, 23 people out of the form. Um, a way you could do that is uh, highlight a portion. I wouldn't highlight the head. I'd keep the head about the same. That's why we drew the head first. Um, and let's use the ABC to take out about a third. So I did ABC. Uh, this is going to take 29 people out. Um, I don't want to quite take out 29 people. So I'm going to look here again. Let's um, not take out the last person here or the last person there. So now we're going to take 27 people out. It's a little better. So uh, from here, I'm just going to hit uh, the delete button. And it's going to delete the performers. And now we've got a, a Sunday morning kind of figure. He's a little holy. Um, I know that the jokes are awful, but but they're free. Um, so I'm going to take this guy, and now I'm going to regroup him as one. So we did the ABC, and now I'm going to regroup this as one figure. So I'm going to kind of go around and just do my little function here of connecting the dots.
So now I've got all that connected. I'm going to use the morph tool. The morph tool is a pretty powerful tool. And what it can do is um, it can move people around, but it can also um, even up the spacing between two people. And the way you do that is you can click anywhere you want, like curve shape. Click on that and then unclick it or click it back. Um, once you click that, it will automatically move to an equal spacing for the things. So we were at a three step spacing, now we're at a 3.27 step spacing. Okay, so um, I look at this and uh, it's okay. Um, it's a little bit on the spacey side. Um, you, can, you can kind of tell if you have a big enough stadium and you have a Jumbotron, you, you could probably tell what's going on here. But what I would like to do is do that and then I'm going to connect the head back up. Okay, so now we have one complete body. Uh, we're going to even up the the spacing again, doing the curve shape trick. Okay, let's see how it looks now. It's getting a little better. Getting a little better. Now what we're going to do is go to the resizing tool and change the interval. Oh, you know, it, it's already at three steps. Let's make it two steps. Let's make it a little smaller. Okay, you have a smaller band. Two step spacing is a whole lot better for pictures than three step. And the reason why is um, it really details exactly what's going on. Now, if you have a, a figure like this, um, you're going to want to bring them a little closer to the front. Okay, maybe not that close. Bring them a little closer to the front, or her, however the case may be. And uh, now we're going to do our stretching tools again. So uh, to take this, do the stretch. We're just going to kind of manipulate the figure just a little bit. Maybe make it a little wider. And then take the top half. and elongate this. Remember, they're going to look a little weird at this angle. But look what the difference is. Now you can actually see what the person looks like. And you've got a 71 person, 71 wind group, a little bit more reasonable for smaller bands, um, to be able to do something. Let's revert back to the saved version of what we had. We're back to the the big 98 person thing. What if what if you have 200 people in your band? What if you have uh, 300 people in your band? What can you do? Uh, well, you can add the um, the surfboard back in. You can add a sun. Um, you can add a wave. Uh, all of those things are things that I did with the Purdue band because the Purdue band's um, a little bit on the bigger side. Um, Hi, Robert. I see your boo comment. You can uh, you can clarify that later offline if you need to. Um, so there's there's all sorts of things that you can do. Let's go back to the, the PowerPoint. So you start with a blank canvas. You trace the shape and you manipulate them with a minimal regard for numbers and sections, just a generic symbol. Um, Step, set step density to at least one eighth step. That's this up here in the corner thing, so you can get a little bit more detail in what's going on. Uh, I like 3D Professional. Uh, not everybody has that. Um, if you don't have it, um, you can use the uh, um, prop tool to make a floor covering. Um, the only thing is you, you can't have the opacity to see um, what's happening behind it. So here's um, here's the surfer um, show. Let's watch a little bit of this together and you can kind of see how it developed and how we ended up animating and then I'll show you how um, I animated the uh, the running man.
Okay, so there you kind of saw um, how we handled it. We have a lot of people in the marching band. Uh, about 230 wins, I think. Uh, something like that. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so we, we had a lot of different elements happening. Okay, we talked about this all about perspective. Don't be afraid to simplify an image. If you're going to add elements, um, try to add new pictures outside of the animation um, main picture. Uh, things like the sun, those kind of things. Um, think about instrument size requirements. Oh, the trombones, how they plague a animation. Um, we love the trombone section. They provide great sound, but sometimes those slides just get in the way. Just think about where you're going to put them. Um, if they're going to slide back and forth. So like on this one, um, I might put the tubas up here in the head just for balance purposes. And then I might put the trombones down here and here kind of thing so that they can slide back and forth um, as we do the animation. Um, you know, different instruments have different size requirements. The tubas, you want to have a little bit more space. This um, rounded head shape gives them a little bit more space. The trombones, you want to make sure they have room for slide. You don't want to put them right here in the middle of the form. I don't know if you can see where my mouse is, um, where there's straight lines because then they're going to be plowing into each other and when they cross paths, um, when they cross, like this X could be on this side and then it could be on the other side, you've got a, a slide problem. So uh, just things to to keep in mind there. Um, is there a way to add more easily to a shape? Um, well, you can. The, the way I would do it personally um, is by expanding the shape first. So uh, do the scale tool like we did in reverse. And instead of making it 100%, um, we're going to make it 120%. And then find ways in between shapes, in between people to add. So let's say I uh, want to add um, a couple of people over here. I just put them in between and then re glue the shape. So I'm going to highlight these people right here. Regroup all. Okay. Then I'm going to regroup them with in the context of what's happening. Use your morph tool um, to even out the uh, interval and voila. Now they're at a th they're at a 2.8 step interval. We want them at a three step interval. We want them at a two step interval. Um, you do need to make sure that everybody is grouped together um, when you do this. Otherwise, it won't let you. So go to your size. We're at 2.63. We want to make it a three. There we go. We added a few people, and voila, there you go. That's that's probably the easiest way to do it. All right. So let's talk about how we're going to animate this guy. <laughs> that that part right there um, takes a little bit of forethought and a little bit of luck. Um, I happen to know this stick figure, this running man kind of figure works well for animation. Let's say we want to make him boogie a little bit. So we want this knee to come out. We want this knee to come out and go straight, and then we're going to do some stuff up here in the top. So, what we're going to do is we're going, right now it's highlighted as everybody. We're going to pick the spots where the appendages start and stop. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. This is a little easier to do um, to make look right because you've got symmetry within the leg and things like that. Um, but for some people, that may be more difficult. So I'm going to start with this leg right here, and I want this leg to go straight. So I'm going to take the morph tool. I want to lock intervals, okay, because I, I want the, the distance between two people to stay the same the whole time. And I'm just going to highlight this. And then I'm going to highlight this. And then I'm going to kind of make it look like it's 
straight. Just like it was before. You know, let me let me back up a tab. We need to do some of these things. Okay, we're going to go from one place to another. Otherwise, it's not going to animate. <laughs> Wonder skipping steps doesn't work. All right. So, take this guy. Remember what it looks like. And just kind of massage it until it looks a little better. Block intervals. Now, remember, one of the principles of your leg is that your leg does not change length when it moves. When you bend at the knee, it's still going to be the same length no matter what. You don't magically make your leg shorter. Okay, so it may come down a little bit because the knee is bending. So you see how this is like it is? Now, we're a little bit thick, so I'm going to move this down there we go now let's just watch this all right looks like a leg moving now this guy will move next He's just not going to kick his leg out. We want to kind of make him rotate a little bit. Make sure you're checking your step size up here. Okay, you don't want to generally go over a 7 to 5. Okay, now this guy, we're going to use the slant tool. We're going to use the distort tool. Now, some of these people aren't going to move very much. See right here, see how this is now in a straight line from an angle? Um, that wouldn't necessarily work really well for trombones. Okay, move the head. Now I'm doing this really quick, so it's a little on the sloppy side, but but now what we want to do is remember that trick we did earlier with getting the intervals the same? We're going to do the same thing. Go to the morph tool, curve path. I mean curve shape, uncurve shape, back to curve shape. So we're going to even up the intervals. And then we're going to stretch the guy out. Okay, just like we did earlier. We need to do a little bit more stretching here. Let's, re there. Let's get them back to the same interval. Now, let's watch to see how he looks down here. Well, this arm right over here, it got a little long on us. So, it looks a little awkward. So, we're going to take that. Use the stretch tool. Shore that up just a little bit. I'm looking symmetrically about how far. So one, two and a half, half, one, two. So maybe a little bit more. Make sure both arms are about the same length. Let's see how he looks now. Yeah, that's a little better. 
Now, here's a cool trick. We're going to highlight this guy. We're going to group him. Um, like secondary count. We're going to get him all back to one grouping. Now we're back at the original picture. We're going to get them back to one grouping. Hit the Morph tool and press Enter. It doesn't look like it does anything, but what it does is it remembers your grouping. You're going to use the Knife tool, group like secondary count, hit Escape, highlight your person again, hit the Morph tool, press Enter, and now we're going to go back to this, hit group like secondary count again. So this is what we have done is created a sequence of events to allow the grouping to be the same as the first picture. And now what we're going to do, go back to this, highlight the whole thing, command C to copy, go back to the third picture, command V to paste. And you see that it groups in the same order that it did before press enter and now we've got a sequence where our guy is going back and forth yeah a little bit of sloppiness here same thing here I, I shore that up uh, but it takes a little bit of time to get it right here's how it looks out here so now our, our guy is doing a little bit of a dance getting his hips moving a little bit And voila, that's an easy thing you can do. Now you can repeat those steps that I just did and continue those for multiple counts depending on the music. Um, there's nothing wrong with having an 8-count sequence or a 16-count sequence of two 8-counts that are moving over and over again for um, you know three sequences um, to just show the audience some sort of movement. Somebody may not catch it on the first try. You give them two or three opportunities to see what's going on. What about auxiliaries? What are, what are we going to do with those auxiliaries? Some bands have way more auxiliaries than others. Um, integrate them in the picture. Do something cool with them. Um, allow them to um, be a part of what's going on. Um, they could, your color guard could be a straight line across to give you a kind of perspective view as to what's going on. Um, your, your color guard could be a sun. They could. Uh, you could have various guard in different places acting out different things but when you do that you segment the picture um, make the, the picture the center of what's going on um, in the John Williams show that I did uh, back in 2017 we had ET in the middle and then we had color guard and a moon shape uh, focusing around the back um, the color guard moved away from ET while ET moved away from the color guard and made it look like it was moving across the moon. Um, little simple things like that you can do um, that can really help and be advantageous to you. Avoid huge intervals and linear groups. Try to keep the max of three step intervals. The closer you are, the more clarity in the form. We talked about that a lot. Give at least a two-step interval for pass-throughs. One step at the pass if necessary. I've done um, shows where it's um, a little bit more. Let's uh, save this guy. And let's uh, browse. Let's see if I can find beach2018.3dz. Okay, so in this one, we've got the same kind of running man happening, but uh, now he's they're playing volleyball, and the uh, the person is going to be walking across. Now, you've got people here at a two-step interval, but when they pass, watch what happens. They move through each hole one in sequence, one after another, and to a one-step interval. Now, if you do this, 
if you do this and then you go to the next one, you'll never really see the one step happening because it happens in a crossing set. Okay, um, that could be another video how to make somebody walk. That's uh, that's a little bit more complicated with how you uh, stretch things out. We can we can do that in a later on video. Props are okay. Um, in this set, this one was designed by Al Tembe. He did a great job on this picture. Um, we used um, streamers, um, like nylon streamers, to make it look like spokes of the wheel. Um, it did a couple of things. It allowed us to keep the, the spoke as a circle, and it added clarity to the picture. So don't be afraid to do that, um, adding pictures to what's going on. Um, in this one right here, we uh, made a thermometer <laughs> for open up wide. It was our doctor show. Um, hopefully we won't do a, have to do another one of those um, with all that's going on in the world. But you can do uh, you can make them out of things. This was made out of felt. Um, you can do vinyl digital printing. There's a couple of people out there that do that. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do, but don't be afraid to do that. Some people think that's cheating. No, that actually enhances what's going on. How many counts do you need to get there effectively? Um, now, a couple of things. Before animating, make sure that you set the the picture what it's going to look like. So, um, this one right here. what we did now it looks like it takes a long time to get there what we did was we told everybody to take an eight to five step to get there and then get there as soon as possible and then once you get there mark time so the picture kind of evolves over time the other thing we did is we added an eight count hold before the picture started moving to allow one it helps the performers um, set the picture but two um, allows the audience to see what's going on before you start moving things you can do adjusted step and have everybody arrive at the same time. You can do pods. Um, I've done that a number of times. Um, you can just do a flat out scatter. Do rank option where you have little snakes moving around. That's if it, you keep everybody in the same order. Um, this one has some of those examples going on. Um, so we're going to uh, Margaritaville on this set. And so as we go to blocks of like 16, 20 people, maybe 25 people, and then float that across the field to um, give a little bit of clarity to the transition. Notice that the guard is still integrated to what's going on. And then we did an eight to five. Everybody just take eight to five steps to get there and the picture develops as they arrive. And we've got a margarita and a shaker of salt. So you can kind of see how we used a couple of different transitional tricks to get from one picture to the other. Um, really think about moving from one point to the other. Don't get hung up on the in-between. The in-between happens um, automatically. We saw that with... Uh, the set that the running man guy that we just animated um, tiny movements four counts small movements eight counts if you're going to do four counts or eight counts try to sequence those and do those over again um, if you're going to do a large movement 16 counts extended floats like a car driving down the field those are going to take 16 to 32 counts um, but remember the more the counts the slower that the animation should move so if you're using tiny animation it should be a little bit faster um, and usually think eight to five as a good guiding spot for that here's another example this is us going to a car motion
So that, that move took a little bit longer to develop um, as the car moved down the field. But you notice um, that they, they were taking 16 to 5 steps. Um, the car was, and then the wheel was taking eight to five steps as it rotated around. Um, we're going to skip the sketch tool for now. Um, we talked about scaling animations already. A um, couple of tips um, as we finish up today: involve your camera crews at the stadium. If you've got a, if you've got a uh, jumbotron, use the jumbotron. Um, think of also the pacing of the show. Um, don't do animations in the opener and then don't do them the rest of the show. Um, I really, I like, if you're only going to do animations in one movement, do them in the closer. End with a, with a big bang. Um, got some people dinging me. Find out what's going on here. Um, learning to rotate wheels and circles takes time. When in doubt, just float the circle across the stage. Um, <laughs> We have some real smart students at Purdue University that uh, can teach fluid dynamics and how you're going to take bigger steps in different parts of the circle and smaller steps in different parts of the circle as it rotates around. Um, we were lucky to do that. Um, I think doing the, uh, um, the wagon wheel that you saw earlier in the presentation Doing that with the spokes helped us learn how to do it. So I'd recommend doing that if you've never done it before. All right. What other questions do, do people have? Anybody have any questions for what's going on or any questions about um, how, how I do drill design? Um, the biggest thing is uh, have fun with it. Um, you know, just because it's never been done doesn't mean that you can't do it. So I uh, wish everybody the uh, best. I'm going to plan on doing these type of sessions a couple of times a week, um, as you, um, just to give, you know, whether you're a high school director or college director, um, some opportunities um, to refine their craft as the uh, this season of being inside uh, takes shape. As always, you can leave comments for me. You can uh, um, send emails j-o-n suite at me.com um, I'd be glad to uh, to help you out with that but you know in the meantime um, happy designing hope everybody has a great day <laughs>